I'm absolutely scared, and frankly, I'm filled with fear every single day of my life. But that's okay, because I'm kind of aiming to live life outside my comfort zone. You see, I do this ridiculous thing called improv. It's acting without a script, performing without a plan. Actors will go on stage, sometimes in front of hundreds of people, with absolutely no idea of what they're going to say. And that may seem like the scariest thing in the world, especially if you're someone who's used to sitting in an audience. But the thing is, improvisers are all equipped with a tool belt of knowledge, a knowledge that helps us deal with the uncomfortable and sudden changes on the fly. We learn how to fail, how to say yes and, how to work with others, how to accept ideas, how to commit, and how to feel confident while looking like an absolute fool on stage. <laughs> These lessons aren't just for improvisers, and they're not just for the stage either. They bleed into every single aspect of your life, and they helped me navigate my way through my uncertain ocean of fear. I think the worst part of failure is the regret that comes with it. Because we all have regrets and we all make mistakes, but it's how we deal with those failures that matters. For example, I'm going to make a very big mistake right now. <laughs> I just dabbed during a TED talk. That was cringy and awkward and embarrassing, but I'm not gonna let myself regret it. Because when we fail or make a mistake, our regrets can consume us, stopping us from doing the things that we love or taking new opportunities because we're scared that we're going to fall, fail again. In improv, it's be able to, being able to say something wrong on stage or even maybe give the worst performance of your entire life and be able to not only smile through it and move on, but immediately forgive yourself too. In improv, when you fail, the scene doesn't fail, it just went somewhere different that you didn't know it would. And that's why improv is the best place to learn how to fail. It's a place where there are no mistakes, where everything you say is immediately accepted, and everything you do is surrounded by support and trust. Failing joyously can, is, it can be very, very hard because embarrassment is terrifying, but I've managed to find a system that works for me, and it's just three simple steps. To breathe, acknowledge, and move on. It starts with the moment of failure. You give yourself a deep, calming breath, and take a second before any deep shame, guilt, and panic can set in, and then you acknowledge that you just messed up, that you just embarrassed yourself, that you want to go hide underneath a rock, and then you move on because there's no use dwelling in the past. Improvisers are taught to commit themselves to the moment, to be present in what's happening right now on stage, and there's no way to do that when you're focused on something you said that didn't work. I think that the best piece of improv advice I've ever received is something that holds merit in the real world as well, and that was to stop trying to be clever and to just say something that's true to your character. In improv, preloading is the idea of when you go into a scene with an idea, with a plan of exactly what's going to happen. But what we forget in improv is that your scene partners have their own ideas and they can't read your mind. And in the real world, it's unpredictable and it doesn't like to follow a script. So we ask ourselves, what happens when we fail? What happens when we suddenly have to live a life unscripted? Let's get to why we like to preload. Preloading is a safety net. We preload so we can avoid failure when it's often what leads us to failing in the first place. I preload to impress, so people will think that I'm funny, that I'm smart, that I'm clever. But preloading is the illusion of, of, of a safety net, and it's really the people in our lives or our scene partners who we can fall back on when we make a mistake. And Learning how to abandon preloading is really hard because we all just want to impress other people. I mean, how many people at school are more focused on their appearances or being with the in crowd than their education? And how many people have spent like 20 minutes on an Instagram caption because it had to be perfect? Because me too. <laughs> 
living in the moment isn't supposed to be perfect. It's messy, and sometimes it doesn't work out, but it's authentic, and it's fun. I think that sometimes, no matter how prepared or confident you are, failure is still going to happen, and it's going to hurt. Surprisingly, improv isn't the only thing that I do. I'm also a huge lover of student council. I love it. Uh, and I had one goal in mind. Ever since junior high, I knew my number one goal for high school, and it was to be student council president. My presidents had all been huge inspirations in my life, and I wanted nothing more to inspire someone like they had inspired me. So I took the risk. I knew that if I wanted to do this, I had to push past all my fears and insecurities and just commit myself to handing over my bleeding, beating heart to the school population for their judgment. I didn't know what people would perceive of me or if they would reject me, but I did it. And the thing was, I was so confident. I'm an optimist, and I created this preconceived idea of how amazing everything was going to turn out. And maybe that's what made hurting lo losing hurt even more. Bef I remember just feeling numb after I got the results realizing that this was my one shot and I blew it, realizing that in an instant, the PA would announce the worst fears in my life, and in an instant, every single person would know that I had lost. I had always been afraid of failure, but what scared me even more was people knowing that I failed. Before, I couldn't imagine a world where I lost. And I certainly couldn't imagine a world where I lost and I was happy. But I'm proud to admit that I was very wrong. In improv, we don't have time to mourn our failures when we make a mistake. We have to immediately accept it and move on so we can create something else that's wonderful. And it's when we start abandoning our regrets that amazing things can happen. Since then, I have accomplished so many things that are really important to me. I have competed in the Canadian Improv Games National Tournament three times. I've won awards, and I've done improv shows, and I've organized multiple school events, and I've even hosted a few, and I'm really happy. Remembering those lessons that through improv helped me get to that place where I'm really happy, but I'm only successful because I'm a failure, because I messed up and I kept trying. We can't, the thing is, we can't get rid of fear. We can only push through it to make the best of the situation. I'm definitely not perfect, and I never will be, and I'm going to make so many mistakes, and I'm okay with that. In fact, I'm pumped. Failing joyously isn't about not being scared. It's about being terrified and doing it anyways. So please remember that your mistakes are not the end of the world, that you should never let fear stop you from doing what you love, that you should greet mistakes by breathing, acknowledging, and moving on, and to start failing with a smile on your face. Thank you.